describe the different or various plant structures and the different plant tissue that, like what I've mentioned a while ago, perform a specific task or function for a plant. And lastly, to be able to differentiate the roles and function of different plant organelles, which includes the mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, centriole, vacuoles, and the list just goes on. But don't worry, I will be talking about that as we progress through this discussion. Okay, so having said that, let's now move forward to another slide that I have prepared. As you can see here, plant life unifying principles. Plants range in height from less than one centimeter to more than 100 meters. Imagine, take a look at the numbers from centimeters to meters. We can confidently say that the diversity of plants on this planet is really diverse because wherever you go, I'm definitely sure that you can encounter a lot of plants ranging from different shapes, sizes, and structure. I'm not only talking about the minute plants or the small plants that you can see in your garden, or for those who are plantita here, during the pandemic, you would cultivate a lot of, a lot of plants because they are very therapeutic. Not only that, but you will see those plants that are really imposing and towering. Like the Gabi plant, diba? which is the most coveted plantita plant essential that our titas are dying to have. We also have a lot of variation of trees that could be found in various ecosystems in our country. Especially here in the Philippines, when you go to a jungle or let's say in the mountain ranges, there's a lot of endemic plant species that you will encounter along your way. A great example that I could provide you is the Rafflesia, which is the largest flower in the entire world, but aside from it looking so aesthetically pleasing to look at, it produces a very foul smell. That is why no travelers would attempt to sniff at the Rafflesia because of the bad smell that it generates. So basically, when you travel across the world, let's say you, we go to, Anna, um, to the jungle of Arizona, most probably you will encounter plants that you have never seen before in your entire life. So who knows, let's all manifest that before we depart on this world, we get to, to see or witness the various species of plants that we have here, not only in the Philippines, but also across the globe, the seven continents that we have here in the planet Earth. All right. I would also like to point out that no single plant exhibits or shows the entire spectrum of adaptations to the range of environments that plants can occupy on this planet, which is the Earth. That is why it is generally presumed that plant physiologists often study, model organisms, plants with short generation times and small genomes so there we have it genomes what is your understanding when you see the term genome it is a biological term can you chat your answer in our chat box or kindly unmute yourself and answer what genomes are so ano po ang genomes na tinatawag natin any um hypothetical guess all right from anyone educated guess what are genomes i know you've faced this term before sa ating mga biotechnology courses that you have had so what are genomes anyone genomes yes okay Yes, exactly. Genetic material. So, 
Again, genomes are the set of genes that make up the entire organism, be it plants, animals, or simply us, the human beings. I can confidently assume or say that not all organisms on this planet have the same genetic material, even though there are some plants or animals that look very similar to each other, but it does not mean that they are composed of the same genomes or set of genes that we have, specifically the genetic composition. But we are not going to deal that much because we are talking about plants, not the biotechnology or genetic world, diba? Kasi hindi rin ako magaling sa genetics. That is my preconceived knowledge about what genomes are. So I hope I was able to explain that for you in a clear and precise manner. Okay. Now, let's proceed to another slide. So as you can see here, we can summarize the major unifying principles of plants as follows. First on our list, as Earth's primary producers, plants and green algae are the ultimate solar collectors, which I concur. And why did I say so? Why am I confident to say that the plants are our main producers of food to animals or even us, the humans? That is because of the fact that plants can produce their own food. Through what? What is the process of food production that occurs in the plants? Anyone? Can you type in your answer? Exactly. Okay. Yes. The process is what we call photosynthesis, which sets apart plants from animals. It's because animals cannot manufacture their own food. They rely on other organisms for survival. That is why animals can be categorized into different categories. We have carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores. Carnivores are the ones who feed on meat. Example, a lion that you can see on the safari or the jungle. If you have seen a lot of documentaries in the National Geographic, these lions are really um, what do you call it? Ravenous? Or in Tagalog, parang matahaw sila kumain ng mga karne ng animals. On the other hand, when we say herbivore, as the word implies, herb, which can be associated with grass, obviously, they feed on grass or greens. Examples are the ruminants, which includes rabbits, cows, horses and many more mammals those who believe who belong in class mammalia as for the omnivore it is the combination of both herbivore and carnivore which indicates or insinuates that they're very versatile because they feed both on meat and grass at the same time that is the main distinction between plants and animals Plants can produce their own food via photosynthesis while, an while animals do not have that power or capability. That is why they are labeled as the ultimate solar collectors because of the photosynthesis. Okay, second one, other than certain reproductive cells, plants do not move from place to place. Hence, they are sessile. So when we say sessile, they don't have the capability to transfer from one place to another, which is very contrary to animals. Animals move via muscle contraction. That is why they are composed of numerous or ample amounts of muscle, of muscle tissues on their bodies. As you can see, the kangaroos, they can hop really high and that is because their muscles are contracting so when we say contracting it is the process wherein their muscles become shrink in size lumiliet siya and then lumalaki it becomes relaxed 
for quite some time and after a while it contracts it which enables it to move even the snakes diba what do you call the locomotion of a snake it is the slithering they slither in this fashion they can move freely in any direction that they want same thing with the fishes or the marine animals that can be found in the vast or large bodies of water they can move because of the muscle contraction that are present in their body in general however like what i have mentioned earlier plants don't have the capability to move from one place to another hence making them sessile and it's gonna be weird if you witness or maybe one day you wake up in the morning you can see plants just casually strolling around in your garden like your plants are jumping so what's gonna be your initial reaction when you see that and if that happens to me i'm just gonna freak out because we are living in a dystopian world that is what i'm going to assume so and for the last one po plants are structurally reinforced to be able to support their mass as they grow toward sunlight against the pull of gravity that is also one of the reasons why plants need the sunlight aside from nutrients or the soil fertilizer that um that serve as their main um staple for survival plants really need sunlight for it to grow because of the gravitational pull that it produces which allows the cultivation of plants that we see not only to our garden but also to other habitats that are occupied by animals including the forest ecosystem okay so okay pa ba tayong lahat can you type ubu kapag okay pa tayo ubu <laughs> okay gising pa thank you for <laughs> participating i'm just trying to catch up with your energy but i super appreciate na nagpa-participate kayo sa ubu na yan ayun sana nakakasabay pa sa ating discussion lahat na nag ubu <laughs> Ayan, okay lang yan. At least, di ba, you are, um, I am drawing your attention. Kasi gusto ko rin na sana, kahit naka-off cam kayo, nakikinig kayo sa aking sinasabi. Okay. Proceeding to our next slide that we have here. Continuation regarding the unifying principles of plants that are present here. I would like to mention everyone bs bio 4-6 that plants have mechanisms for moving water and minerals from the soil to the sites of photosynthesis and growth as well as mechanisms for moving the products of photosynthesis to um to one photosynthetic plants and organisms via the cell transport by which that is the activity that you have to accomplish within the entire week. You're going to study how these nutrients move from the roots of the plants up to their um, the flowering part, specifically for those plants that produce flowers. Second one, plants tend to lose water continuously by evaporation and have evolved mechanisms for avoiding desiccation when you encounter the term the term desiccation what does it mean it only means that it is the status or a condition wherein a moisture or water is being lost and who would have thought that plants can become really succulent which means that they are composed a lot of fluid inside their body structure but little do we know that they lose the water via evaporation which is the process kung saan yung water is nawawala through the process of desiccation nga, losing all the mace uh, all the moisture that has been occupied to a particular plant okay next one 
Plants develop from embryos that derive nutrients from the mother plant. So basically, we also have what we call the offspring plant. It's not only applicable for the humans in genetics, right? But it can also be associated with the plants because they start as embryos. So I would assume that over the course of time, they would become zygote as well, which will become a plant that we can see around us that possess observable traits. And these additional food stores facilitate the production of enormous or large self-supporting structures on land. And what structures am I talking about that give support to plants? First and foremost is the roots or yung ugat, di ba? What is the function of roots? They anchor to the ground which enables the absorption of nutrients for the entire plant to grow, specifically the trees that we can find everywhere. Lalo na po sa ating campus, sa CVSU, I'm so amazed na ang daming pine trees ang present dun sa second gate. Parang they are arranged in a beautiful array and parang ang galing lang kasi yung roots nila talagang nag absorb ng nutrients which enable them to flourish even more. And aside from roots, we also what we call the stem, the branch, di ba? That gives rise to leaves, to flowers as well. And those are the self-supporting structures that I'm talking about regarding the plants. Okay. Now we are finished discussing the unifying principles of the plants and now let's proceed to the main topic for this afternoon which is all about an overview of the morphology and the structure of plants. Like what I've discussed a while ago when we say morphology, it is the study of the structure the anatomy or the physiology of the plants and what are the different processes it encompasses regarding its development. We can define plants generally as sessile, multicellular organisms derived from embryos. I know you are familiar with this term, multicellular, which means that Plants are composed of multiple or let's say numerous amounts of cells that perform a specific in their body, carrying out different responsibilities as well. They are adapted to land and able to convert carbon dioxide into complex organic compounds through the process of photosynthesis, by which we have talked about this a while ago. Furthermore, plant cells resemble other eukaryotic cells in many ways. Aside from plants being eukaryotic cells, animals are also eukaryotic. So we are talking about eukaryotic. What does it mean? What are eukaryotes? Anyone who'd like to answer, kindly type in your answer if you have any idea. What is the distinguishing characteristic of a eukaryotic organism? Yes, thank you. They have a true nu nucleus, which regulates the different activities that occurs in the cells. And aside from eukaryotes having nucleus, they are also composed of other membrane-bound organelles. Example, we have mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, um, cell wall, what else? We also have the centriole, the chloroplast. So those are the membrane-bound organelles that are pr present in plants but lacking in the animals. But either way, both plants and animals are both eukaryotes. I hope that is clear to everyone. Plants, I tapos na pala tayo. For example, they are ano nga, enclosed or enveloped by a plasma membrane and have a nucleus 
and other membrane-bound organelles that I'm just finished mentioning just now. Ito na nga, yung pinaka-overview and structure of the plant cell that we have here. I'm quite familiar or aware that you have seen this figure before. This is the general structure of a plant cell under a microscope or if you're going to observe it under it this is the magnified cross-section of a plant cell so let me talk about each one of these and um, organelles one by one we have here the plasmo desmata which is the hole that links um, the contents of the cell from the outer environment it is categorized into plasma membrane and cell wall. Plasma membrane can also be called cell membrane. As the word implies, it is the one that protects the cell from the outside environment, which envelopes the entire plant cell that you see here, including the various organelles such as the nucleus, Golgi apparatus, vacuole, endoplasmic reticulum, and of course, the mitochondria. And we also have the cell wall. It also performs the same function as the cell membrane, but this one enables the entrance of the unwanted or let's say wanted molecules from the outside environment. It's like a passageway kung saan dito pinapapasok yung mga dapat makapasok na molecules sa loob ng cells. And here are some of the organelles that are only exclusive to plants. First on our list is the chloroplast. So any idea what chloroplast is? Yes, anyone? Can you type in your answer? What is the role or function of chloroplast in your preconceived or educated knowledge or guess? Ano ang chloroplast? Ayun. Precisely, Mr. Gerald. Photosynthesis takes place in chloroplast. And basically, this is how it looks like. It has a lot of enfoldings para po siyang bean shape na nakasuspend sa ating cytoplasm. Ang function po ng cytoplasm is that it enables the floating or the suspension of organelles para maging organized sila sa loob ng cell. Chloroplasts can be categorized into two. Ang thylakoid membrane which encloses yung stroma which is the inner part of the chloroplast and the starch grain which is right over here kung saan dito po na produce ang starch sa mga halaman okay next one is the vacuole which is very prominent here at the center of our plant cell which can be um it has a subunit which is what we call the tonoplast which is located just on the surface of the vacuole itself and of course mitochondria or mitochondrion na alam na alam natin yung pinaka main function niya since we were in high school mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell right as what's been taught to us by our teachers but aside from it being the powerhouse of the cell mitochondria is the site of atp production or generation atp stands for adenosine triphosphate which is being converted into energy but we will not discuss that much kasi nasa ibang activity pa siya dito po involve yung process of crab cycle na talagang um, hindi pa ako prepared para ituro siya kasi medyo ano pa ako doon hindi pa ako nakaka-move on ng college. Ang hirap niya kasing intindihin. Yung glycolysis, ganun. Yung different process. Pero I will try my best to explain it to you in a way that you will be able to understand it. Medyo matagal pa naman siya. Parang pang-fourth activity natin, yung Krebs cycle. 
and glycolysis, the different cellular processes. Peroxisome, it is a structure that is an oval shape that you can see here, which is composed of enzymatic um, structure that breaks down toxic chemicals or materials present in a cell. In other words, it is the one that eliminates eliminates these unwanted substances out of the plant cell. On the other hand, this enfolding structure that you are seeing right now is what we call Golgi body or Golgi apparatus, which is the site of protein synthesis. It also allows the modification and transportation of proteins throughout the entire plant cell that you can see here okay for the um, ribosomes it is categorized into two subunits we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum the main difference between the two subunit is that the former which is the smooth as you can see here on this structure there's no ribosomes that are embedded on its surface which is very contradicting the rough endoplasmic reticulum when we say rer or rough endoplasmic reticulum it has a lot of ribosomes that are embedded or affixed on its structure making them having a very rough texture or appearance wherein the function of these ribosomes that are embedded on the rough er is to be able to synthesize or produce proteins and of course i cannot miss this the nucleus comprised of nuclear pore that allows the entrance of molecules from it via the holes that you can see here and these are the holes that I am talking about. They are present in many numbers. They are numerous in general. As for the nuclear envelope, which envelopes the entire structure, allowing for protection and regulating the various activities that occurs within the plant cell. And for the last one, we have what we call the nucleolus which is located at the center of the um, nucleus, which enables the biogenesis. Ano pala? To be specific, protein biogenesis. When we say biogenesis, basically it is the development of life from pre-existing life. Or in other words, it is the synthesis of chemical compounds or structures of all living organisms that we have on this planet be it both plants or animals okay so we have two more structure remaining the small membranous vesicles that you can see suspended in the cytoplasm and for the last one we have the um, filamentous cytoskeleton the function or the main role of cytoskeleton is to be able to remain or maintain rather the shape and organization of the cell. The reason why an anim a plant cell is cube-shaped is because of the doing of cytoskeleton. All right. So basically, that is just an overview of the structure of the plant cell that I am discussing. Now, for additional data or information. Structures found in plant cells but not on animal cells include a very enormous or prominent central vacuole, cell wall, and plastids such as the chloroplast, where photosynthesis takes place. The large central vacuole is surrounded by its own membrane and contains water and dissolved substances. 
Its primary role is to maintain pressure against the inside of the cell wall, giving cells shape and helping to support the plant. So little do you guys know that cytoskeleton also performs the same role as the central vacuole. They maintain the organization and the shape of the cell at the same time. Okay next slide please the cell wall is located or situated outside the cell membrane it is comprised mainly of cellulose and also contain lining which makes it more rigid so when we say rigid it's not stretchable hindi po siya pwedeng banaten however you like so medyo ano po siya um, it cannot be deformed in other in many ways making it having rigid structure the cell wall shapes supports and protects the cell from harsh condition the cell might be in especially knowing the fact that a lot of substances whether wanted or unwanted can pass through the cell because to begin with cells are semi-permeable and what do I mean by that when we say semi-permeable or permeability? Anyone who has an idea? What does semi-permeable mean? Anyone? Can you type in your answer? As the word implies, semi. So, hindi siya permeable. Semi daw siya. Ano po ang ibig sabihin ng semi-permeable? Sige, wait ko ang response nyo sa ating um, chat box. Yes, anyone? Are you guys still here? Ayun. Exactly. Miss Clarice. Yes. Namimili ng substance na papasukin, selective passage of substances, and partially allowing substances to enter or penetrate through the cell. Thank you for participating to the three of you. Tama yung minention nyo, guys. Kapag sinabing semi-permeable, selected only yung mga molecules that can pass through the cell. Hindi siya lahat. Kapag lahat naman ay pumapasok, the term that we should use is permeable, which is very contrary to semi. Like what I mentioned, hindi po lahat, selected lamang or pili yung mga molecules or substances that can penetrate through the cell. Kasi class, imagine, kapag lahat ng substances ay pumasok lahat sa cell, Diba? It's gonna cause a lot of discrepancy inside it. Wherein, the nucleus is no longer gonna be able to maintain the different activities that occurs inside the cell. That is one of the reasons why nucleus is really important or crucial para sa regulation ng iba't ibang activities inside the cell. Okay. It also, oh, the cell wall rather, also prevents the cell from absorbing too much water and bursting eventually. It also keeps large damaging molecules out of the cell, wherein these molecules are some in or substances that should be eliminated from the cell to prevent discrepancy in it. Okay, and for the last one, plastids, as you can see here, they are defined as membrane-bound organelles with their own DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid, which, dic which um, dictates the physical attributes of a person regarding its appearance that are very observable. Examples are chloroplasts and chromoplasts wherein chloroplasts are composed of the green pigment called the chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis. 
where a, and as for the chromoplasts, they make and store other pigments. They give flower petals their bright and vivid colors. For example, a rose. Aside from rose having a pink petal, it can also come with a white rose, a yellow rose, or the most famous one, a red rose. Diba? Parang iba-iba yung variation when it comes to their petals color. And that is because of the chromoplasts, which are responsible for the color of the petals of a particular flowers that we can see around us. Okay? For the last topic that we're going to discuss this morning, there are said to be three basic types of cells in most plants. These cells make up ground tissue, which will be discussed in another concept. As what I've written there, the three types of cells are described in the table I have provided be below. The different types of plant cells have various structures and functions as well. Okay, for the first one, Parenchymal, let's talk about its structure. Evidently, they are cube-shaped, loosely packed, thin-walled, relatively unspecialized, and contain chloroplasts. So guys, when we say unspecialized, it is the opposite term for specialized cells or what we call the stem cells. The main function of stem cells is that they undergo differentiation. Uh, Sir Ryan, ano ang ibig sabihin ng differentiation? Ang differentiation is the process wherein a specific cell can be very versatile and eventually transform into many other cells, which includes the blood cell, epithelial cell, neuron cell, nervous tissue cells, and many, many more. However, in the case of parenchymal, unfortunately, they cannot be transformed into many cells because they are unspecialized to begin with in nature. For its general functions, it undergoes photosynthesis, cellular respiration, which can be aerobic and anaerobic that I'm going to be discussing in the upcoming weeks. And for the storage of food nutrients, which are derived from, um, from the soil and from the sunlight, which are the staple for the development and survivability of the plants. Okay, for the visuals, a great example are the potatoes that comes in many different shapes and sizes as well. We have to make uh, potatoes rather that are in the shade of light yellow ranging to brownish one. Food storage is the function of parenchymal cell. Second, um, types of plant cell is the colenchymal for its general structure they are elongated which means very tall and narrow in appearance and irregular thickened walls kapag sinabing irregular they are not uniform in size halimbawa class for instance lahat ng cells are elongated Pero hindi po sila parehas ng width and diameter. Merong mas matangkad at merong mas less matangkad. So for example, ito yung pinakamatangkad at dahil irregular sila, meron pang mas hindi matangkad sa kanya. So do you get what I mean? Basta hindi sila pare-parehas when it comes to their elongation. So that is what I'm trying to insinuate and explain. Magkakaiba yung length nila yung width and diameter like what i mentioned and for its main function for supporting and wind resistance a great example is in the case of the string which can be found running through the stock of celery which can be um exemplified on this image 
that I have provided on your screen right now. And for the last one is clarenchymal. For its structure, they are composed of very thick walls, making them resistant to harsh conditions that the cells might be exposed to. It is also composed of linin for its main function, strength and support, which is all thanks to the very thick walls that it has. Examples are the tough fibers in jute, which is utilized to make a rope. Just in case you are wondering how these fibers look like in reality, take a look at this image that we have here. These branching structure that you're seeing right now are the tough fibers that can be found in the jute fruit. Na ginagamit para mahagawa ng tie, ng rope, and other um, stationary equipment, should I say. So I guess that ends our discussion for the overview of the plant structure and morphology. Now, let me ask you, do you have any questions so far or is everything clear so that we can proceed to the introduction of your first activity for this course? Gising pa ba tayo lahat class? Okay pa ang energy? Clear naman po? Yes? Ayun. That's very good to hear that I am being clear to all of you but still if you have questions just interrupt me and allow me to cater to your learning needs and now I will stop sharing my screen and proceed to the introduction of your first activity for G bio 88 80 tulad ng sabi ko sa ating chat group this activity is going to be carried out by group or teamwork. Wait long class. Saan na siya? Wait. Naklose ko po ang tab. Sorry. I'll go to my G drive. Your first activity is going to be all about homeostasis and cellular transport for plants. I'm just going to explain the instructions para hindi kayo malito. But before we dive into that, can I ask if it's visible naman? Yes? Are you invisible siya? Yes. Okay, thank you for responding. This is what I prepared for all of you. Don't be overwhelmed because you have sufficient time to have it accomplished. And I've come to realize that if you are an individual who's going to work on this activity, it's going to be really difficult. That is why I opted to make this as a group activity so that each members can coordinate with one another for you to have a decent result that you're going to discuss on our next class meeting for our pre-lab discussion for laboratory number one. It is entitled as homeostasis and cellular transport. The first thing that you have to do on this portion, you can see course and section. Just write your course and it's BS Bio 4-6. Group number, ayo nga pala. I will share it to you later. Bale, I've already made groupings for all of you. So, wala na kayong magagawa. Kasi ako nag-group randomly. So, sana okay kayo sa groupmates nyo. Wala sana kayong, um, you know, problems with each other. But still, kung hindi ka okay sa groupings, just send me a message para ma-rearrange ko ulit siya. Yes. Pero sana okay na kayo. Okay. Mag-a-assign tayo ng group leader. Siyempre, ayoko naman mag-decide. Ayoko maging pala decision na ako gagawa ng group leader. So, mag a ko from each group kung sino yung gusto nyo pong i-assign na group leader. So, bali ang ginawa ko, we have seven, ay six groups ba? Um, seven groups with six members. 
each kasi 42 students kayo. Ayun. Just write your members here. Bale. 5 siya. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Another thing that you should remember. Once I posted this sa ating G Classroom, only the leader has the right to turn it in. So, bali yung mga members, just mark it as done. Kasi gagradean ko naman siya. Para ano tayo, isang submitan na lang. At hindi na ako, you know, ma-overwhelmed sa pag-record sa ating class record. For this portion, you can see the introduction for homeostasis and the various cellular transport process that we have here, which is dysmosis as well. For your first activity, homeostasis, what you have to do is you have to drag and drop the descriptions into either passive transport, active transport, or both, but apparently it's very impossible na ma-drag mo siya kasi this one is a JPEG file. It's a picture generally, so hindi mo siya pwedeng move around and drag it however you like. So dapat class, ang pwede kong ma-suggest is gamitin nyo po ang Google Docs para makapag-draw kayo ng square and mailagay yung answer. So for this particular activity, what you have to do to put your answer here is go to the insert button and then click on the drawing which is right over here, new. Ito po siya yung plus sign or icon. So once you clicked it, ayan, mag-draw na po kayo dito ng box. Ito, text box pala yung tinutukoy ko. Yan. Kahit maliit lang, basta yung kasha po doon sa box, sa diagram. Okay. For example, write your answer, osmosis. Ayan. I'm not quite sure lang, class, kung merong ganitong feature sa MS Word. Kasi over the last few years, mas sanay akong gumamit ng Google Docs. Mas very, ano kasi, simple yung UI, yung interface. Kaya ito yung ginagamit ko when I am checking the activities for my students that I am handling. So once you are through, save and close. And andito na siya. Just drag it. Ayan. But kailangan nakaano siya po. In front of text yung setting para you can place it in front of the photo. Ayan po. Halimbawa, ang sagot po dito sa, act, sa passive transport is Osmosis, pero hindi po yan yung sagot. I'm just giving you an example. Ay! No pala, class. Sorry. Nakaprovide na pala yung ano, column, yung table for here. So, though, there's no need to drag. I forgot pala. Ginawa ko siya kagabi. So, I overlooked it. Ah, basta yan. So, ang gagawin nyo, class, andito na pala siya. Just below the photo, nakalist down na po dito yung passive transport which has seven answers, possible answers. Yan. Just type na lang class, hindi po siya magugulo kahit anong gawin nyo. Unlike the other, di ba parang straight line lang siya. So once you type, it becomes ruined. So for this particular table, just keep on typing in your answer. Yan. Number two. Basta wag na lang siyang i-edit-edit yung setting para hindi siya ma maruwin. Ayan. Sa so both naman, it has four possible answers. And for the active transport, meron po siyang eight possible answers. I will check them thoroughly kung tama pa yung answers nyo. So for this one, never mind. Akala ko kasi wala pa akong na-prepare na table for this. So... Ayaw matanggal. Paano to? Basta, burahin ko siya later. And for the second part of your activity, it is all about the cell transport activity. This is where you're going to apply what I was talking a while ago. Yung pag-drag po. So, number one is to label the membrane. You'll need to draw lines to some of these structures draw cholesterol molecules in the membrane 
you can see on this square, ano ba yan? Sa loob ng square, andyan po yung mga different answers. We have the channel proteins, integral proteins, phosphate, hydrophilic head, fatty acid, hydrophilic tail, carbohydrate chain, and for the last one po is the peripheral proteins. What you have to do is just label kung saan po siya mahahanap on this photo or JPEG file that you are seeing right now. So you can do it by drawing once again. So paano ka po maglilabel? Insert and go to the drawing. New. And then you have to create a line. Pero dapat straight line siya. Ayan, a line. Kuhara ganito po. And then, um, save and close. So your line is right over here in front of text para it will become visible to the JPEG file that you have. And then drag mo lang po siya dito. Kunwari, ito po yung the structure. is the channel proteins. Ayan po yung arrow. Tapos, para mailagay yung um, channel proteins, you have to once again um, draw a text box. Ayan. Tapos, type in your answer. For example, channel proteins. Save and close. And then, in front of the text for the setting, and then drag it just nearby the arrow. As simple as that. So, clear ba siya, guys, yung instructions natin when it comes to labeling and drawing your text box? Like, meron bang katanungan? Opo, clear naman. Pero sana, I recommend that you use Google Docs para magawa nyo itong sinasabi ko. Kasi hindi ko talaga sure kung pwede siya or feasible sa MS Word or other um, document software that you can utilize. Basta ma-submit nyo lang siya and makita ko yung label that would suffice, that would do good naman sa akin. So, yan lang siya. Meron siyang um, six possible answers that you have to label in this picture. And don't forget to answer the following questions. This can be found sa internet, but make sure that you put your references at the latter portion in APA format. Yeah, answer this 10 questions that you have here. I 11. Again, class, ha? Huh? This is a group activity, not a charity work. Make sure that each member has their own respective contribution upon accomplishing this group. Kasi, gagradean ko po kayo bawat isa regard, um, corresponding to your contribution, which is nasa latter portion po ng ating activity. I will show it to you later on. And for our letter C, transport across the cell membrane. This is a concept map na I'm quite sure familiar kayo or na igawa nyo na siya before. Ito po yung mga different answers, the possible ones for the transport across the cell membrane. And how are you going to put your answer on these boxes that you have here? Same process that I've discussed a while ago go to the um what do you call it drawing new draw a text box or insert a text box and then type your answer why the osmosis again and in front of text ay pumasok po siya sa ano hindi ko siya ma-drag Ayun. Lumiit. Ayan. Lumiit siya ng slide. Pero, yan. Mara dito sa, in this box, the answer is osmosis. Yeah, Just drag it there. As simple as that. There's no need to, to put color on the background. Just keep it as it is. And do it in the remaining boxes that you have here. 
binut ko lang siya. As simple as that, I hope that is clear to everyone. And for the last and final activity that you have to do is the osmosis. Same process. Click on the drawing button, create new, and then insert a text box and directly put your answer here. You don't have to create a separate file for this activity because I've already made a cough a copy for each and one of you. Para same format na lang po ang ating um, lab 1 activity. And definitely don't forget to input your references. Must be in APA format. Alam ko familiar kayo dito kasi sa thesis, ganyan po yung requirements sa inyo. You have to input the, sir, the name of the author where you have um, obtained your journal Yung date, of course, and yung book number, if possible. You know how to do it. I expect a lot from you na alam, ko, na alam nyo na po ang pagtamang format for inputting references. And sa final portion po of this lab activity, proof of inclusion. It is understood that everyone who signed this worksheet prior to submission or turning in are included regardless of the level of their contribution. It is also expected that everyone who signed had exerted necessary effort leading to the accomplishment of the lab worksheet above. It is also understood that only the ones listed below will be acknowledged for grading this lab activity. Those who were not included in this sheet will not be given grades as with the grades given to those who signed below. Kumbaga, hindi po same yung grade mo compared sa mga students na nag-contribute sa activity na ito. So, meron po siyang six na rows. One, two, three, ay, tama ba? Basta dito, one, three, four, five, and six. Just write your name here on each boxes. Tapos, the date when you accomplish it. And of course, your signature as a proof that you have conducted or carried out your activity. For this column, you will see a question. Was the member participatory? It could be answered either by yes or no. But be honest lang, especially po sa leader, kung nag-participate ba yung members mo or not. Kung yes, syempre, yes, di ba? No, no. Maging honest na kayo sa bawat isa kung may naitulong ba siya. And for the last one po is the matrix of work assignments. Same thing with this table. Just put your group members you are composed of six per each group and you also have to mention or type in the contribution of a particular member kung anong part ang kinundak na po sa activity kung siya ba yung sumagot sa concept map siya ba yung sumagot dito sa questionnaires or siya ba yung nag-answer sa labeling which is the photo right over here as simple as that and I bet na sana lahat kayo my contribution according to the assigned task um, that is given to you by your leader. And for the rating, rating, ako po ang may karapatang mag -rate regarding sa contribution po ng group member or a student for this activity. So yun lamang po, I will check it thoroughly. And I will give you one week to have it accomplished. Late submissions are fine with me. Kaso wag naman po yung super late. And you also have to justify the reason as to why you have submitted or handed in your work not on time or not in due time. Okay. May katanungan po ba before we proceed to the groupings? Clear ang strong... Clear po ba ang instructions, everyone? Ayan. Clear naman. Mas mamaya, i-upload ko sa YouTube itong pre-recorded video para just in case you'd like to watch, you can. 
kasi class sa G-Drive parang starting on October. I'm not quite sure about the specific date. They're going to limit the storage capacity from unlimited to 5GB only. So medyo na saddened ako by that news kasi ang dami kong pre-recorded videos that are stored in my G-Drive and right now, my storage capacity is 120 GB. So from that, it's gonna be 5 GB na lang. Parang hindi ko magrasp. So I've come to realize na I will upload na lang po sa YouTube and will send you the link sa ating mga recorded presentation. Ayun, para may YouTube channel na rin ako. Pero that is for CVS. Yun naman, not my personal channel. Ayun, sana clear naman. Pero kung may katanungan or medyo na-confuse kayo, kindly message me lang po sa aking FB Messenger account. Again, very responsive and accommodating po ako sa mga estudyante. Basta huwag kayo mahiya. Okay, para po sa groupings na ginawa ko last night. Ayun. Wini-wish ko na sana okay po kayo dito. Okay. Compose po tayo ng seven groups wherein each group is um, has sa six members in total. For the group one, we have Miss Abigero, Werba, Ancheta, Tanyara, Arshaga, and Solares. So, who's gonna be the leader for group one? Any volunteer? Sino ang gustong umako ng responsibility of being a leader? A leader na dapat assertive, ha? Na dapat, um, nakikipag-coordinate sa groupmates. Okay, any representative who'd like to take on the responsibility of being a leader for group 1 para ma-finalize na po natin? Yes. Chat mo lang po kung gusto mo, just say, I'm in. Kind of like that. Miss Abigero, you won. Miss Werba, Dominic, Genesis, Erica Rose, Antoinette, sino ang gustong maging leader for this group? Or ako mag assign <laughs> Go na po. Sino? Uh, si Werba, sure kayo ha? Baka hindi alam ni Miss Werba. Masyado po kayong pala decision. Sure kayo. Si Miss Werba na. Si Camille. Uh, sabi ni Arshaga, ikaw na raw. Nag-decide na siya for your own. For herself pala. Anong for your own? Ano? Go? Sino? Si Miss Arshaga? Si... Who would like to be, ano? Miss Camille, ikaw na. Push na natin. No pressure naman to sa pagiging leader. Parang you're just going to submit it sa ating classroom. Yeah, that's your role. One of your roles. To be an epitome of a good leader. A great example among your members. Ano, are you ready to take on the role of being a leader? Ah, sige, that's good to hear. I'm rooting for you, Miss Camille. Sige, i-highlight ko na po ang yong name. Si Miss Camille is our leader for Group 1, Fighting. Alright, group two. We have um, Mr. Roland Jade, Mary Beatrice, Micah, Bea, Gwyneth, and Pauline. Let me ask you, who would like to be the group leader for group two? Any volunteer? Pauline, you want Gwyneth? Who would like? Uh, 
Roland, you want? Mr. Tuvera. Wala si Tuvera. Ay, si Tuvera. Ito pala. O, oh, sino po? Tuvera or... Arayata. Who? Si, ano na? Tuvera. Jika, Tuvera, Miss Micaela, Aribal. Oh, maraming bumoto kay Miss Gwyneth. Ikaw na po. Ayun. Sino talaga class? <laughs> Baka mag-away-away pa kayo sa leader, ha? Si ano na, Miss Aribal. Final. O, oh, arayata raw. Any objection? Gina, for the Gina tayo kay Miss Arayata. Pass da. <laughs> Alvarado, ikaw. Roland. Are you ready to take on the responsibility of being a leader? O, oh, responsible daw po si Arayata. So, feeling ko rin, ikaw na, Miss Arayata. It's meant for you na maging leader ka for GBIO80. Ikaw na, Miss Arayata. No more objection. Gina, I'm gonna highlight it na. Yes? <laughs> May crying, ano. Oh, go na. No pressure to Miss Arayata. Wala namang ano to. For the leading lang tayo ng members. <laughs> yes, wala ka lang choice. Ikaw yung vinot ng members mo. Ah, sige. Sana wala kang hard feelings sa kanila. Okay, so Miss Arayata will be our leader for group number two. Okay, group number three, Princess, Genesis, Stephanie, Colin, Ronalyn, Ralph, Sandro, and Angeline. Who is brave enough to volunteer as the leader for group number three? Oh, sige. Genesis. Salavaria, Jika. <laughs> gusto ng gusto mo raw maging leader. Uh, who would like? Sige na class, you've known each other for four years. So I bet na comfortable na kayo with each other. So whoever you choose as your leader, Go na. Boado. Stephanie. Ah, si ano sa, si Mr. Salavaria Genesis. Yeah, we have two Genesis here. Oh, Miss Boado. Stephanie, any objection? Go. Would you like to take on the responsibility of being a leader for group number three? <laughs> Ikaw nang nag-decide? Sino ba? Si Angeline? Miss Kilas? Kilias? Kilas? Ayan, yes naman for Miss Angeline. nag -yes na siya. Ayun. And for the bravery. Okay, si Miss Angeline na po ang magiging leader for group number three. Without any objection. Yeah. Okay, group number four, Rika May, Julian, Trisha, Via, Angela, and Gerald. Who would like? Group number four, Rika, Miss Cobalias, any objections so far or are you okay with it? 